Okay, yes. Would uh, derivatives be a combination or use of algorithms? You mean in, in, in terms of calculus? Oh, actually, I, in fact, one of the things I, I probably will do is do a half a session on calculus because calculus is the, is the modern technology world. Without calculus, we wouldn't have modern technology. And uh, calculus, so I'm going to defer a detail down, so I will definitely now next week. In fact, one of the things I'll talk about next week is calculus uh, because it needs, it needs more than a, than a quick answer. Um, but let me give you a quick answer anyway because I'm on a roll now. <laughs> okay. Uh, the brilliance of calculus, and it's absolutely brilliant, is it takes something, and it's, it's almost the same brilliance as algebra, um, in that it sort of takes something that's intrinsically difficult, in that case, tedious, because you're doing the same calculation many times, and by ratcheting up the abstraction, instead of having to do the same calculation many times, you have a general method, a formula, that you can just apply without thinking. That's what calculus does. Calculus takes an incredibly difficult problem involving rates of continuous change, which when you analyze it involves talking about infinitesimal increments and things changing over infinitesimal amounts of time, gets very deep both philosophically and computationally in terms of, at least conceptually, philosophically and conceptually difficult because you are dealing with these infinitely, infinitesimally small things and so forth. Okay, very, very challenging, very, very difficult. In the 17th century, it was a major headache for people to do it. Uh, Archimedes had struggled with it thousands of years earlier got results, but it was very hard to understand exactly what it how to make sense of it. What calculus does is take something extremely difficult and turning it into a mindless algorithm. Calculus is just a set of syntactic rules that allow you to work out the answers to things involving continuous change. It took it from one end of the spectrum to the other. Calculus starts with something which is conceptual, intellectual, unbelievably challenging. The infinite is something that the human mind literally can't grasp. And yet it, it rears its head as soon as you start looking at infinitesimal changes in continuity. It takes that extremely deep stuff that our minds can't fully wrap around and reduces it to a completely mindless set of symbolic manipulations. That is technology writ large. Take something complicated and reducing it to something you just push buttons. Uh, calculus was one of the world's first great conceptual technologies. Technology is in the sense of it's a black box. You plug something in and the answer comes out. Magic happens inside. Magic happens inside calculus. I became a mathematician when I met calculus in my last year of high school. I thought calculus, I thought mathematics was kind of useful. I was going to be, I was going to go to university to be a physicist. I wanted to do physics. I went to high school when Sputnik went up. I mean, I just thought space, exploration, all this stuff. So I, so I went to university, I was going to go to university to do physics. Spent all my time doing physics. Wasn't particularly good at mathematics. And that's not true. I, I wasn't gifted at mathematics, but I needed to do it for physics. So I put a lot of effort into learning mathematics, which I viewed as a set of tools that would help me in physics. Then in my, after my first year of what's the sixth form in England, when I'm sort of 17, getting into the, the last year of high school, we start doing calculus. We started really doing calculus. I mean, just looking at what the definition of the derivative and so forth. And I'm presented with this stuff that, A, is obviously very powerful. It allows you to calculate, you know, where the moon's going to be three weeks from now. It allows you to calculate all these other things. It's gonna, it allows you to calculate what's going to happen to the spinning top when it starts to slow down. It allows you to calculate all of these wonderful predictive things with incredible accuracy. And yet, I had no idea how it worked. And for me, to have something that was thrust upon me that was clearly powerful and worked, and in a sense, was simple because you know you look at the a couple of pages of the textbook said here's how it works, it made no sense to me. Well, I'm the kind of guy who wants to lift the hood up and see what's going on here. Um, so for me, what turned me into a mathematician was realizing that here was something powerful that I didn't understand, and it took me many years to understand it. And by the time I did, I was a mathematician, um, because once you've got it, it was funny because most of the other kids in the class and, and and that's the beginning. My teacher said, look, here's the formula. If you differentiate x to the n, you get nx to the n minus 1. Just use the sucker and get the problem solved. And I was that kid that kept saying, yeah, yeah, okay, but where did that formula come from? Why does that formula work? And I was the only kid in the class, including the teacher, actually, who really worried about why that was the case. Um, you know, that was, clear, that was the point where I became a mathematician. Uh, because everyone else was content to just use it and get the answer. And for me, the fact that they could do that without understanding it was what made it interesting. Because I wanted to know what Newton was thinking when he came up with that thing, or what Leibniz was thinking. So, um, 
I'll come back to that next week. It's a really good question, and it's a big answer, and it's the answer that on modern... You know, we're doing big themes. You know, we've already looked at numbers. What's the biggest invention that mathematicians have produced that changed the world? Hindu Arabic numerals. That's fundamental to modern life for everybody. So that was the biggest one, I would say. What's the next biggest one? Probably algebra, which is more efficient ways of dealing with numbers. And the next one's going to be calculus, because that gives us, the first one gives us all our commerce and our financial business and our you know, quantitative stuff, money, began with money as far as we know. All of that comes on from the numbers. And on the other side, we've got calculus that gives us all our modern science and technology. So these are big, big themes. Um, OK, yeah, that was slightly more than a little digression, but I'll come back to calculus next time. OK, shall we take a break now? Let's take a break now, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about how we count the votes in an election. Stanford University. 